Now, you've brought in this iconic Worcester vase. Yes. So what can you tell me about this? Well, it's uh, left to me by my mother. Uh, she died a couple of years ago. I don't know where it came from, how she arrived at her house, but um, I believe it's about the last century. Or... Was it in her china cabinet? Yes. Yeah, I would imagine yes. that's that's where, where they would keep it because it's a it's a as I said it's an iconic uh, late nineteenth century maybe about nineteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, Worcester jug. Yeah. Uh, Worcester being one of the finest porcelain factories in England, so it's fine quality. Mm. Uh, it is getting to that period of Worcester is getting slightly in the bourgeois taste. It was it was made for show. Mm. They had amazing painters and decorators. This one is, is beautiful condition. The painting on it is not by any of their top decorators that I can understand. Mm. But it is a, a, a saleable jug. People mm. collect Worcester, people like Worcester, as they should, because it's very, very high quality porcelain. Um, you'll have an idea of how much you want for it, have you? I've got a vague idea. A vague idea. <laughs> well, I'll put some money on the table. I don't know if my offer will match up to your expectations. We'll see, won't we? I'll try you. There's 20 pounds, 40 pounds, 60 pounds, 80 pounds. How's that sounding? Uh, a bit shy what I was expecting. A bit, a bit shy? Yeah. A little bit shy or a big bit shy? Well... Oh. You're not saying, are no. you? No. <laughs> well, 80 pounds. Mmm, no. Let me tempt you a little bit more, but it will only be a little bit more. Ninety pounds. What do you think of that? Uh, not quite there. Not quite there. No. But I might be quite there. Let me think. Let me think. Can I find something smaller? I don't know. Ninety-five pounds. I think that's going to be my last offer on that. A little bit more, I expected. You may get more auction. I'm going to leave that decision entirely up to you. What do you want to do, Derek? Uh, considering that, I accept. You're going to accept my money? I really thought you were going to go to no. auction. Well done, thank you. I'm okay. absolutely delighted. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be able to sell it. Whether I make a profit, that's an entirely different issue. I think it's pretty near the bone, but it's very nice quality and I don't mind having it. The antiques and collectibles have been rolling in thick and fast. We're with Tim Hogarth, and Carol's hoping he'll prove to be a willing buyer for her gunpowder flasks. They've been sat in the garage for years, so I thought I'd bring them in to see if we can get some money for them. Let's see if the sparks fly. Two gunpowder flasks. Yeah. They can't be ours, Carol, can they? They were handed down to my husband from his gran. Because they're boys' toys, aren't yeah. they, really? <laughs> and I'm going to ask you, do you like them? Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just have a look at them. This is the nicest one. And on here we have got um, a bit of carnage, really, haven't we, <laughs> when you look at it? We've got um, a dead hare and we've got some pheasants grouse and then we've got the name James Dixon and Sons. Now, James Dixon is um, a factory in Sheffield. I'm not sure whether it's still going but they do a lot of silver play and, and silverware and that. Very, very good name in, in, in the silver industry of plated wares. Um, but obviously these are copper, they're not silver play and they would have never been plated. I would say, looking at this, this looks a little bit earlier. This might be 1830, 1840. This one's a bit later, 1870, 1880. But this is the commercial one, really, because it's got this, I was going to say, pretty scene. <laughs> it's it's not, quite decorative. Yeah, it is decorative, and it, it, it's uh, typical of its period, really, you know, typical Victorian. So... If I bought this today, what are you going to spend the money on? Well, I'm going to put it towards going on a holiday. Right. So it's a deposit for a yeah, holiday. Yeah. Right. £50. That's nice. It's lovely. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these. Well, you're tempted, aren't you? I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> like poker this. 
is a bit like poker. Yes, but I'm not very good at poker. <laughs> <laughs> I gathered that, you know, Carol. <laughs> Just gathered that. Is that your last offer? Well, it will only be a little bit. Because you're not good let's, at this poker thing, are you? No. <laughs> let's see how much is a little bit. Well, I'm going to the bottom of that. <laughs> 60 pounds. Deal. Deal. Like Thank you were so much. easy to deal with. <laughs> All this week, we're celebrating the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. But only last year, the good folk of Wharton Bassett were bestowed a royal honour. In 2011, Wooden Bassett became the first town in more than a century to be given the title Royal, in recognition of the role it played during the repatriation of UK military personnel. The Duke is joined now by the Mayor of Royal Wooden Bassett, Paul Heafy, who has generously brought along his pride and joy, the town's Royal Charter. You must feel very privileged that during your term, Her Majesty the Queen graciously granted you this royal charter to be Royal Wharton Bassett. I mean, to be asked to become mayor of your hometown is, is a bit special anyway. To, to be mayor of your hometown when it becomes a royal town is just quite unbelievable. I mean, people at home watching the programme, I'm sure as soon as you mention the name of Royal Wharton Bassett, you think of the circumstances, the repatriation of our fallen heroes. Local townsfolk, they turned out in such huge numbers and the conditions, sometimes very bad conditions, but they came time and time again. And they showed such dignity and such respect, not only to the families, but sadly, to our fallen heroes that were repatriated. Very, very moving. And I think that's something we will always remember about Royal Wharton Bassett. Now, this here is the town coat of arms. Yes. Now, am I right in thinking you need a registered coat of arms before Her Majesty can graciously grant you the charter? Yeah, correct. When we were, when we were informed that we were going to get, uh, become a royal town, we had to go through a procedure which was to register our coat of arms. And as you can see, our coat of arms has three lozenge yes. here and this is actually the coat of arms for the house of clarendon ah. so when we approached the college of arms to register it they informed us that we couldn't register it because it was already registered under a different uh, family so we worked with the college of arms a dr clive cheeseman who helped us massively in uh, creating the new coat of arms which has a visible link to the royal family with the royal lion i see now once that was done then her majesty could graciously grant you this royal charter? Yeah, correct. Uh, the Princess Royal on the 16th of October 2011 came to Wooden Bassett. There was about 20,000 people in the town who Amazing. came out on, on the day. Amazing. The population of Wooden Bassett is just over 11 and a half, so we had, again, lots of support from, from the wider community. The sun shone, and it was an amazing day. And uh, we, we, we hopefully, um, when people see the term Royal Wooden Bassett, they don't necessarily just think about us as a town, but they also think about those fallen servicemen and why we became royal. Uh, well, I, I think there's no question about that. I mean, this town will always live in the memory and the heart of the people in this country for what it did. Everyone knows what this town signifies. And just to visit, I think it will be an important part of a, a family's weekend or a day out to come and visit here. I'm going to suggest come along to Royal Wharton Bassett. You will not be disappointed.